Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a chit chat get ready with me. I have had kind of a long two weeks and I'm just ready to sit down and kind of do a makeup discovery video and use a few of the things that I've gotten recently which are very few because I've been on a no low buy basically um, until my birthday in June. But if you'd like to see what I come up with with my new products please keep watching. Okay, so about two months ago, I received an email from um, shophush.com about a, a shopping app called Hush or Shop Hush, and they kind of offered me a collab or offered for me to be able to put in a proposal for a collab. Well, I never heard back from them, yay or nay. Um, I've even written to them since then, and they've never written me back. And so I was just kind of curious because as I looked on their app, everything kind of looked like a dupe. Um, I have mixed opinions on dupes because um, the copying of somebody's artistic creation and basically kind of taking credit for their creativity, that kind of bothers me. But on the other side of things... Cosmetics are so incredibly expensive that I'm happy that there are similar products available for people who can't afford the high-end price tag, um, which in general is me most of the time. So all that to say, um, two years ago on my birthday, my first trip to Sephora, I was going there in the search for the Huda, the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Palette. <laughs> and they didn't have it. And at that time I was told that it was being discontinued and I wouldn't be able to get it. Um, when I purchased this, which is the Aphrodite palette by Bad Habit that I got on Shop, Shop Hush, um, I'm just gonna call it Hush because I can't seem to get Shop Hush out without stumbling over it. Um, I actually went to look at the shade names to see the comparisons and it was available at Sephora. So. Now that I have this, do I need to pay 60 something dollars for that? Don't think so, but we'll see how this performs. I just love my Desert Dust palette so much that I wanted to see what the other one was like. In time, if this doesn't perform well, I may end up getting that since it's available now, especially if I have a coupon or something. But I have done nothing more than swatch these, but I just, when I open it, I just go, ah, oh, angel singing, because all those shimmers and glitters are all different finishes, and I think that's what kind of, that's what I hesitated on whenever I didn't buy it when I first saw it available, was because I was like, I don't even know what to do with any of those things. Well, I have a little bit more experience now, and I do know what to do with those things, and I want to do things with those things. <laughs> So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and chit chat with you while I'm getting my face ready and doing all that jazz and more than likely I'll fast forward through a lot of it because I'm trying very hard to have not so lengthy videos so that you guys can watch the whole thing and not have to do it in increments. So I'm going to go ahead and prep my skin. Step on the today I'm going to use the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour foundation. Um, I've had kind of mixed feelings about this because when I initially started using it I think I was using it entirely too much and it looked pretty cakey. It's very full coverage 
you can get a really flawless finish with this foundation. Um, I found that the use of Fix Plus is very helpful. Um, I'll put it on and I will put Fix Plus on my brush as well as my beauty sponge and it kind of shears it out a little bit and that's perfect. So it's just like with anything else when you try something new you just kind of have to keep giving it different methods until you find the one that works for you. So I think I have found the one that works for me. I'm in the shade Classic Ivory and I do love this so much. Um, I've shaken it and so you can't tell how low it is but I'm getting pretty low and I've already ordered a backup and it's the first time I've been excited about a drugstore foundation since the Infallible Pro Matte. So I'm excited to have this. It's, I think I paid $7.99 or something like that for it at Walmart. So I start off with two pumps and that's more than enough and sometimes I go in for a third because I shear it out but I like to use these little paddle brushes to begin with and I just spray Fix Plus on it a couple sprays and then I use my towel that I keep in my lap just to kind of wipe it off where it's not really wet but it's kind of damp and then I go in with my fingers and just kind of dot it starting around the center area of my face so guys, it's been kind of a tumultuous kind of, gosh, the last two weeks have been kind of crazy. Um, the last time we talked like this, it's been a long time, um, we were having major issues with my husband and seizures, um, all kinds of things going on, and it's a very challenging time. But thankfully, as an update for that, he has seen the diabetic specialist. They did adjust his settings on his insulin pump and the um, seizures are very few and far between now so I'm very thankful for that so I just kind of smooth this around Step on the Once I get kind of an initial layer, I go in with my beauty blender and go back in in areas that I want more coverage. I really like the way this covers up my discoloration and freckling. Probably better than any foundation that I've used for a while. I do find that I have a little bit of settling into these deeper lines in my forehead and in my smile lines. So I'll show you whenever I set it, I'll show you what I do to kind of combat that. I kind of go on a little heavy in this area to begin with because in a minute I'll spray this with Fix Plus as well and um, shear it out just a tad. Step on the One more thing I wanted to say about the color stay too, super stay, super stay, is that it does oxidize. I did start with a, sh a darker shade than this. I very rarely am any kind of ivory. I'm usually some kind of be beige, but it does oxidize. So like right now it looks ghostly white to me anyway. And so um, it does darken a little bit. So you might want to, if you want to try it, you might want to start off with a a lighter shade than what you're accustomed to. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my color correcting and my concealer. Step on the land, I've got your hand, and now we're way down, fade out. Was it your plan? Can I understand? I love the air you bring, everything. I'm in the sun, a fire is burning. You tell me to hold on tight. I wish that we could stay here forever. I wanna remember all oh, the sight of you 
So this time, um, it didn't really sink into my lines that badly, but it did a bit. So I'm going to take my initial beginning brush and just kind of smooth that stuff out of there. And then go in with my Wet Beauty Blender. And I'm using the Patrick Star Setting Powder from MAC. And I just go across those horizontally. And I just kind of let that sit for a minute. I like to put a bit extra on my smile lines just for a minute. And on those deeper lines on my forehead. And then I take my fluffy brush and do the rest. Right, now I'm going to use my Chocolate Soleil Bronzer to do a little bit of cheekbone sculpting and jawline sculpting. I think I said sculpting just now. <laughs> I'm going to use the crown brush that came in my BoxyCharm. I haven't had a chance to use these yet, so this one kind of looked like a good shape to go right along the contour line. And then I'll blend the rest of it out with my um, bronzer. Step on the land Now for a highlighter, I did pick up something new. I had to, had to, had to add a small item to my order when I was repurchasing the foundation to get free shipping. And so this is a Wet n Wild highlighter, Precious Petals, that I've been wanting to try for quite a while. And I'm really glad I picked this up. It was less than $5 and it's just beautiful. I saw a couple others. Um, it's really hard to decide what to get when you're shopping online because it's hard to tell colors, but I had seen this one in person before. So I'm going to use my Smashbox fan brush and I'm going to glow myself up here. Step on the left. I am going to go ahead and prime my eyes with Painterly Paint Pot, put on my eyebrows, and I'm going to do that off camera for the sake of saving some time. But I did want to talk about one thing. I do have a beauty group on Facebook, and it's called The Beauty Within, and it's really been growing. Um, some people come from my YouTube channel to the beauty group, and some people come to the beauty group and find their way to my YouTube channel. But I had a friend named Christine that's on my beauty group that suggested a really cool um, challenge and we started it we are going to be starting we started it this Monday um, and but we're going to do it once a week for the month and so if you want to get in on it you can join the group um, it's always going to be linked in my info box and it'll just say Facebook group the beauty within and it'll give you a link to click you do have to join and I have to approve you 
but I'll approve you. <laughs> but anyways, it was a really neat idea that she had learned about on another beauty group, and it was called Palette Roulette. And basically, you take six palettes, or if you don't have six palettes and you have three, you just number them twice. But you number them one through six, or one through three, and four through six in the same palettes. And every Monday, I use a virtual dice thrower, and I throw two dice, and the first die is the palette number that you use, and the second die is the amount of shades that you have to use from that palette. And so I did my look for this week so far, and you know, it had it had to start off this way. The first two dies were both six, so I had palette number six, which ended up being um, the Makeup Geek in the Light palette, and six shades. And I thought it was going to be hard, but it wasn't. And so you can also pull other palettes in, but it ended up being kind of cool because I think what we're going to do is share pictures on a thread each Monday, throw the dice and choose the next palette. Um, it gives you an entire week to do the look, which most people can accomplish just getting ready for work um, or to go out somewhere. And um, yeah, and at the end, I think I'm going to make a video just showing all the pictures of the different looks that we came up with during the challenge. So if you'd like to get in on it, just click below on my link and I'll add you to the group and you can get started as soon as whenever I get this posted the following Monday or whatever day. I think I'm going to try to get this posted um, on Saturday, so Saturday a week from today. So you should be able to at least get in on a couple weeks of the challenge. So I just wanted to get that in there. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go off and do the time-consuming things, and I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back, and I'm primed, and I've got some eyebrows. Um, before I get started with the eyeshadow, I wanted to talk about two things. Number one, I don't know how many of you actually read or listen to audiobooks, but I have a recommendation. Um, I know a lot of people that um, frequent my channel are Christians, and so... This will be a particularly good read for Christians, but it's a good read for anybody as far as I'm concerned just because of the in-depth feeling of it all, I guess. Um, it's called For the Love, and it's written by Jen Hatmaker. And I just, you know, I've kind of been on this journey of self-discovery lately, <laughs> and it just kind of fed right into what I had been thinking about and journaling about and all those things and I don't want to give too many details about it um, but if you're someone around my age like I would say from 35 to 45 um, we kind of evolve into these people and we leave that part of life where we're exclusively mother exclusively wife and we're taking care of everybody else's business and we get on to the part of our lives where we start to return to thinking about ourselves and who we are and what our our goals and aspirations are and then this book is just a really good companion to that journey so if you're kind of in that area of life where you're trying to figure out who you are beyond your 30s um, I think this would be a really good read for you so again it's called for the love and it makes me laugh because in the book she talks about the way that she always says for the love of Pete for the love of all that's good for the love of whatever and that's where and she had like 15 different examples and they're all humorous but it's it's full of humor she's got an excellent personality I don't know how many of you are familiar with Brene Brown but it's that kind of vibe where you just kind of feel good just listening to her and it's actually her reading it on the audiobook if you get it on an audiobook um, and so yeah it's a good book and you might check it out if, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in Secondly, music is like a major part of my life, and I do listen to a lot of Christian music, but I have a lot of roots in secular music, and I have a lot of bands and singers that I follow because I've loved them for years. Um, if we're talking country, Garth Brooks. Hello, he's from Oklahoma. He went to the same university I went to. Um, you just are immersed in Garth if you're from Oklahoma. Um, when it comes to singer-songwriter type music Gavin DeGraw is my favorite and it's time Gavin I know you're watching this makeup video it's time for you to bring out a new album um, and if you like um, alternative rock music 
There's a new album out by Fall Out Boy, and I've followed them forever. I've seen them about eight times in concert. Um, occasionally, there's a little bit of language in their music, but not much. And this is a really good album. Um, yeah, it's really good. It just came out in January, and I already have the entire thing memorized because I've listened to it so many times. So if you like that kind of music, you might want to check it out. It's really good. I'm all of a sudden spacing what the name of it is. I can't remember at all, but I'll put it down in the info box. Okay, so we're on to this Aphrodite palette. And when I open it, I have so much inspiration that I just don't even know what to do with it. And so today I kind of thought I would just kind of do something basic and just see how they perform. I did use this shade called Koi right here to set my primer. So I do have that all over my entire lid right now. Um, there's so many colors in here that call to me that I don't even know where to start. And so I think I'm just going to kind of go in with my usual method of beginning with a transition color. Um, there are some, there's quite a few warmer colors, but there's also a few cool colors. So you could kind of do what you, you could go whichever direction you want to go with it. Like if you wanted to go the dark route, you could do, you could shear that out for a transition. And there's kind of an olive and a brown shimmers. Oh, they're really pretty. But you know me and you know my love of pink, you know my love of warm tones um, and just very park sparkly pinks and golds, burgundies. I just can't get away from it. So that's probably what I'm going to go for today. But for now, I'm going to go into this shade called Admirer, which is Admirer, which is a warm um, kind of mid-tone, but it's, it's really going to be good for a transition shade. I'm going to start off, I think I'm going to use two different brushes. I'm going to start off with my BH Cosmetics Blender, and I am going to then follow up with a Morphe, a Morphe brush. I did want to ask you guys this too, because I've had lots of questions on my comment sections lately. Um, one of them was to recommend palettes. People are asking me to recommend palettes all the time. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed at the amount of palettes I have, and I actually spread them out all over that bed recently. Well, hi, Eli has joined us. I don't know if he's been there the whole time or not, but um, I'll insert a picture if I can find it of them spread all out, and and it's it, it will make you realize how I need a 12-step program for um, eyeshadow palette addiction, but. I have given a lot of those away, so it's it's kind of condensed now, but not much. Um, and anyway, you'll see the need for, for my decluttering and why I've been doing the stash shopping and all those things. But that being said, would you be interested in like my top 10, top 5, um, my top recommendations? Would you be interested in a video like that? And if you would, please comment down in the comment section <laughs> and let me know what you think about that. Also, if there's any other requests that you have, please let me know. I, I have a million ideas of my own, but on the other side of that, I want to film videos that you're interested in and videos that include information that is important to you. So I'm going to go into my BH Cosmetics Blender into Admire. And every time I say it, it sounds like admirer, but just admire. So we're going to go in with this. Um, these do kick up a little bit. You know, I don't, I'm telling you that so that you know, I don't care about kick up. I really don't. Um, I just tap off my brush to avoid fallout or I put a bunch of powder under my eyes and I just go with it. And then when I'm done, I blow it off. <laughs> and who knows where it lands on my cream colored carpet. But anyways, I use my little waste basket right here to tap off just... Be, until I figure out how these perform and if they're not extremely pigmented then I will go in and not tap off. Oh, one more thing about these Bad Habit um, palettes from Hush, the Hush app. Are you interested in more of the products from there? I was thinking, even though I'm on a no buy or a low buy, it's so inexpensive that I could probably, for under 30 bucks, probably get a full face of makeup in a couple palettes. Um, and kind of review a lot of their stuff. So if you're interested in kind of a, a full face of Hush stuff, 
to see what they have and, and what the quality is of it, let me know. Step on the Um, I think that's super pretty and it is comparable to kind of the pigmentation of the, the Huda Beauty um, Desert Dust Palette because I like about the Desert Dust Palette, I like that you have to spend a little time building it up because you don't have to be so careful. <laughs> I love Lorac shadows, I love Anastasia shadows, but you have to be careful with them and most of the time you have to tap them off or they end up, you know, getting all over your face. So this I did tap off the first time, but it's not necessary. Step on the land, I've got your hand, and now we're way down, fade out, no. Was it your plan? Can I... That's a super pretty color, and you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of these colors in a lot of palettes, but there's something about this one that's a little bit mustardy, um, and it almost has a little bit of an olive tone in it, and so it's a little bit different than what I've seen before, but I like it. <laughs> um, I'm going to get even warmer, and I'm going to go into Romance, which is right here. And I'm going to go in with the Morphe M511, which is a really round, kind of stiffer um, blending brush. I'm going to start off again, same way, by tapping this off. And I'm just going to go into the upper crease with this, just to add some warmth here. have one eye that is always more difficult than the other. Mine is always my left eye and I think it's just because, especially when I'm filming in particular, because I have to be at a weird angle. But anyway, I was thinking um, also about some of you might want to update on my health stuff and my weight stuff. <laughs> um, my health stuff, I had a pretty significant flare um, for about the last two weeks and it was really difficult and, and among all that I had two late nights of a parent teacher conferences um, all kinds of stuff going on aside from that and it was just I it was just terrible timing which when is it ever a good time to be in pain um, but it really did remind me that um, you know it's still here and the reason I say that is because with my health changes and the changes in my diet, I was feeling so much better. Um, I was not having the fatigue that I normally have. The pain was minimal, you know, workable. I could deal with it. I could, I could function, um, even with some changes in medication and a reduction in, in pain medication and things like that. I was still doing pretty good. I, I was really convinced that my inflammation was kind of being lessened and that was a really good thing. Um, I was I'm, I was sleeping well, um, having a lot of energy to make it through my day, not requiring so much sleep. And so whenever I experienced a ton of fatigue, it was because I was having a flare and it's like now I know when I experience that kind of fatigue, I know it's on the way or I'm, you know, full blown into it. As far as the the rest of the time, I've been doing really well. Um, I've been eating well. I've been staying away from sugar and carbs. That's been the number one thing that's been the most helpful. Um, I have been drinking tons of water. I'm looking at it because I got it here, my friend. I'm going to make an avalanche. But anyway, I've been putting lemon juice in my water. 
and electrolytes to re replace some of the things that I need that I miss from eating carbs, um, increasing salt, which sounds crazy. A lot of the things that I do are counterproductive or sound counterproductive or the opposite. Counterproductive is not the word. Uh, seem counterintuitive to what you would ordinarily want to do based on the stuff that we've, you know, all kind of believed from a medical standpoint or a health standpoint. Um, it all kind of turns it on its head and it seems wrong, but the fact that I feel so much better and I'm doing so much better, um, you know, it's just a testament that it's working for me. And like I always say, if there's anybody who's interested in what I'm doing, I would be glad to talk to you about it one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to spend, dedicate a lot of time to it here um, because not many will be interested in it. But if you are, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. Um, let's see. I started in October, so October, November, December, January. I guess we're about four and a half weeks, months, four and a half months in. And I've lost about 35 pounds, I think. Um, about two or three weeks in, we started measuring, and from that point, I, I've lost about 20, 20 inches. Um, we just measure arm, thigh, waist, hips, and bust. Um, and so I'm so happy with that. It's, it's coming off slowly and steadily, not in a mad rush, so I don't feel like it's going to come back anytime soon. Um, I've gone down a size in clothes, and I'm starting to experience a little bit of physical freedom, and that makes me so happy. And so I'm doing really well. What I'm doing is sustainable. The only thing that I really have an issue with is sometimes I just get really sick of eating the same things over and over. And so I have to take some time to um, really to go do some research and just do some searching online and find some different ideas. And I have. And, and whenever I add a few new things that, you know, carries me through another couple of months and then I'm okay. Um, I've also found some really good websites that and YouTube channels that have been very helpful with information and ideas. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm in the groove of this. I feel like I am, this is my life now and I'm okay with it. I really am. And just as long as I continue to see progress, I'm going to be really happy with that. I'm excited because I see my rheumatologist, which is my fibromyalgia doctor, um, on the 28th. And I'll be excited to see what my blood work shows. Um, I'm just excited because we've been working so long to try to find some way to get control of the weight. Um, so I know she's going to be so proud of me and I'm excited for her to know that I've had some success. And I am excited to see how my blood work is as far as, you know, lipids and triglycerides and cholesterol and, um, you know, blood sugar and inflammation and all those things that she checks for. Vitamin D, my, you know, my vitamin levels that have always been an issue um, for a long time, vitamin D deficiencies and iron deficiencies and things that I just couldn't seem to get up no matter what I was doing. And so, yeah, I'm doing really well. And, um, I just, I'm just going to keep on keeping on and, and hopefully in a year from now, I'll be in a lot better shape than I'm in now. But for now, I'm, you know, I'm really happy with my success so far and in, in my progress in that respect. Um, yeah, so let's carry on with the eyeshadow. Uh, I can't talk and do eyeshadow, so I'll stop and have a little anecdote with you, and then I'll I'll move on to the next colors. Let's see here. This, you guys know the pinks are calling my name, but that's all I ever do. So I kind of feel like I want to do, there's a really yellowy gold here that seems to be kind of a finely milled shimmer, and then there's a chunkier glitter glitterier that kind of has an olive tone to it. There's a warm pink. There's a more kind of mid-tone pink. But I think I'm just going to go for the gold, actually. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and darken my outer corner. I am kind of excited that there's a black in here. This really pretty cranberry color right here. I mean, there's just so much pretty going on in this palette. I, I know I'm really going to like this, and I'm excited that I got it. And I'm excited that it's pretty quality for for 12 bucks. Um, for those of you that are interested on about where it's, it's pr um, produced, <laughs> that's not the word I'm looking for, but it says that it is distributed out of Los Angeles, California. Um, it's cruelty free. And yeah, it's out of Los Angeles as far as what I can see. Produced. Created? What word is that? 
<laughs> manufactured. That's the word I was looking for. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this darker color here that's kind of a, it's almost like a burgundy in my outer corner. Um, if I can find my correct brush for it, I want my Coastal Scents pointed tapered, um, flat pointed tapered brush that I can't remember what it is. All right, so I couldn't find it. So I'm gonna use this Morphe M RG18, and it's from the, I think this was the Christmas one. Anyway, I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna pat it right there in my outer corner. And the color is called Jealousy. I am gonna pat this one off big time. Step on the land. a Morphe M433. I'm not going to put any more product on it yet. I'm just going to go in with it clean and blend that and see how, how much it blends out. And then I'll add as needed. And I'm not pulling this very far in because I am pulling it forward, but I'm not going to pull it very far in because I want the gold, I'm hoping that it's going to be really vibrant and beautiful. I'm wanting the gold to really cover like two-thirds of this. Step on the land. tiny little bit of fallout but I think that's pretty I think I'm gonna go ahead now and do my lower lash line I'm going to take this Morphe dome brush as per usual I'm just gonna go right into that orange color romance and start with that and pull it kind of far down Step on the And after that, I'm going to go into the Burgundy Jealousy and put that up closer to the lash line. All right, I'm good with all that. I'm not really sure how to approach this gold shade, and so I think what I'm going to do is start off with my M433, my MAC M433. Um, that is if I can find it <laughs> and try to just put it on as is and the color that I'm talking about is this one right here and it's called Tease um, and see how it goes on then I'll try my finger if that doesn't work and if that doesn't work I'll try a wet M433 So I'm going to go in with this and just see. How it does. Oh my gosh, that's super pretty you guys. Whoo. I am. Pleasantly surprised by this palette. I don't know, you know, knockoffs or dupes usually and of course I haven't used the real rose gold palette but I have used the desert dusk one and so 
I kind of feel like this is really comparable to that kind of quality. And so I'm assuming that the rose gold one is probably similar. And I think if you used a wet brush, it would get super intense, but I kind of like the softness of this, just the way it is. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Step on your land, I've got your hand, and now we're way down. Whew. I like that a lot. I'm going to go in with my finger just a little bit. And that is upping the the shine a little bit. I'm going in very lightly. I hate how cross-eyed I look whenever I do this, so I'm trying to not do that. It's funny what kind of crazy faces you make. I'm going to grab that brush that I used for blending out Jealousy and I'm just going to blend out that line. What do you think? I think it's really pretty. The only thing that I feel like I need to do is maybe go back into Romance and really tap off and just maybe go back out around this just to bring that warmth back. Hmm, super pretty you guys. I'm really happy with this. Um, I think what I'll do is go ahead and clean off this MAC brush and use it to go back into Koi which is that cream shade that I set my eye with and just kind of go back up under the brow bone to highlight that a little bit more. Wow. I have a very good first impression of this, you guys. I'm really liking this. And I'll use the very beginning brush just to go in between those two colors and make sure there's no line. Try not to jack up my eyebrows. I'm going to use my color switch to clean off this blender and I'm just going to go in and just do a last little blend on everything. Yay! I like that. A lot. Um, I think I will um, do my eyeliner off of camera and then I'll come back and talk to you about the lashes. I haven't been including a lot of the smaller items like I've been using or I've been talking about in, in my stash shopping I've been doing palettes and face palettes mostly and not so much going into foundations and blushes and all those things because there's so many um, and lippies and lashes even but I have a drawer full of lashes and so I've kind of been endeavoring to get into those too because a lot of them are backups for lashes that I already know that I love but there are some that I haven't even tried yet. And um, so today I want to use some that I haven't tried before. So I'm going to go ahead and go put on my, um, my eyeliner. I'm not going to curl my lashes or put on mascara because I want to talk to you about that. And we'll see how it works out. So I'll be back with some winged eyeliner though. All right, so I forgot to put an inner corner highlight and so I used MAC Nylon. And so I have my wings, I got my wings on, <clears throat> and what I was going to talk to you about is I watched a video last night from Raw Beauty Christie, which was a how to apply false eyelashes, and I've been applying false eyelashes for a long time, and I'm okay at it, but I always like to watch videos of people that I respect because maybe they have an idea that I've never tried before. Um, one thing I've noticed with her is that she almost always puts on eyelashes without any eyeliner and I don't ever have that kind of courage because I don't often get them on straight and my black eyeliner hides that. 
and I still like winged eyeliner regardless, but I would. There are times that I would like to just put on a pair of lashes with some really basic eyeshadow, just rush out of the house, right, without having to do all the eyeliner and all that stuff that comes along with it, the potential to mess it up and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, one thing that she does that's different, and I think I have done this before, but by accident, um, I have watched so many false eyelash tutorials and videos over the years that, you know, I don't know where I picked up what. I just kind of kept experimenting with the different things and found out what worked for me. But one thing that she did is she did not curl her eyelashes, which almost every tutorial I've seen tells you to curl them first. Um, and she doesn't put on mascara before she puts the eyelashes on. And... Our eyelashes, she has a lot longer eyelashes than I do, but I have very short and sparse ones. But like even now as I'm looking down into this mirror, I can see exactly where the lash needs to go. If I had put on mascara and curled my eyelashes, curled my eyelashes and put on mascara, I would not be able to see. And for those of you that don't know, the place that the, the false lash needs to go is in the actual little divot where in between your skin and your lash and it's not easy to get an eyelash to go there when you can't see where you're aiming and you've got something adhesive on it so whenever it hits it's going to stick um and so yeah i'm going to actually do them on camera today because i want to see how her trick works um i did want to show you these lashes this is a line that i've loved everything from and I have one in particular called Little Black Dress by this <laughs> by this line. It's from Kiss and it's called Lash Couture and they're faux mink. Um, and I love the Little Black Dress. I have one and there's a couple different ones. There's one called Gala that I really like and this one is called Boudoir. And I don't think I've tried this one before. If I have, I don't remember what I think of it. But these are pretty thick bands, and that's another reason why I wanted to try the other method. Um, but they're beautiful, and they're not so long. And so for those of you who have hooded eyes or slightly hooded eyes, these are really good because they, they taper on the inner, and they flare out in the outer, but they're not so long that it covers up all your eyeshadow. And so if you have hooded eyes, please check out these and boudoir and little black dress in particular because they're really good for hooded eyes and plus they're black and wispy and beautiful anyway so I and and for the longest time I've been using the kiss strip lash adhesive because I got this one time whenever I couldn't find duo and I much prefer this it's some good stuff so if you haven't tried this for a lash glue um, it's some good stuff I don't I don't know if it has latex in it or not it says formaldehyde, no, it's formaldehyde free and it is latex free. One thing that she said she did also is use um, dark colored lash glue because she, you know how I'm always worried about my eyeliner being janky or my um, lash glue showing? She says that eliminates that because it dries dark. But the only problem with that is that you have to have steady hands and non shaky hands and a good aim because if you hit somewhere other than where you want it, it's going to, especially if you've done a bunch of eyeshadow, it's going to stay there and it's going to leave a black mark and it's going to mess up your work. And I just don't feel like doing all this work and then jacking it up with some black um, lash glue. So the other thing that she showed that she says was a, was a game changer, and I agree is a game changer, is this kind of tool. Um, I haven't used this much to apply, but now that I can actually see exactly where it needs to go, I think this tool will make it even easier. So I'm actually going to try it using this and we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll do one in real time and then I'll probably do the other one sped up. I don't know how long this video is, you guys. You know I try to condense it and I just can't. And I've already trimmed these, by the way. That is the main thing. And I, I always roll them, especially when they're these really thick bands, to try to give it a little curvature so it's not straight out. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to hold it right here and apply some glue. Oh, I was talking about the length of the lashes. Make sure that 
you measure them to your eye prior to trying to apply them because most lashes are too long for ordinary shape, ordinarily shaped eyes. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people who are inexperienced with lashes have trouble. And that is, it, you, you have too long of a lash and it gets too far into your inner corner or too far outside of your lash line and it ends up hitting against your skin as you open and close your eyes to blink and it ends up making it lift on the edges. It is important to be looking down into a mirror um, because, in fact, I'm going to flip my mirror over so that it's lower down. Looking down into a mirror where you can actually see your lash line. And the best thing to do is to start looking down and you're going to angle it down so that it's not pointing straight out and you're going to attach it. The only important part to attach at the beginning is the middle. So you're trying to get it where you want it. You can move it, but you try to aim it <laughs> where you want it in the first place and set it down. And once the center is attached, I'm going to get my regular tweezers for the rest. You grab the outside corner and put it down. And I did not put it down where I needed it. There we go. And it looks like, and occasionally you'll get lucky <laughs> and your the inner corner will just sit down and that one did she went through and squeezed her natural lashes together with the falsies and you have to be really careful obviously with that when you have a metal implement close to <laughs> your eyeball I kind of wish that hadn't sat down where it did because it's not exactly where I want it, but I'm going to leave it alone. And I'll probably speed this one up, or maybe not. Maybe I should try to do a better job. And we'll deal with the um, mascara after I'm done with both of these. I'm not sure. I don't want to still just use my regular tweezers. I feel like I can see better with just that little part instead of that whole full. But I will use the other ones to squeeze them together again here in a minute. It's about how much glue I put on them. And you definitely need it to be tacky before you go in with it. That's a super pretty lash though. Super, super pretty. I don't know that I've ever used these before, but it sure is like a Audrey Hepburn kind of lash. <laughs> All right, going in. I didn't place that well. went too far. Oops. Went too far inside. This eye is so hard for me to see. There we go. And that one really set down nicely right where I wanted it. I'm going to make sure I didn't get, I can almost drop the lash, so I want to make sure I didn't get any glue on the tweezers and then I'm going to go back through here and squeeze them together. Very carefully. 
I'm going to try these. Yeah. Our neighborhood dogs are having a barking contest again. And see, I can still see, I can even see my eyeliner. And so, I like to, before they dry completely, I like to push them up if they don't look like they're um, sitting up high enough. But these are super pretty lashes. And at this point, luckily, if you do get them in the right position, your natural lashes are not going to be fully separated. Like, you can't see a separation. The only time you see a separation between the false lashes and your eyelashes is whenever you have it too high up on your skin. And if I didn't tell you, since I just noticed it, I did put this also in my waterline. This is one of my Emily Noel recommendations. The um, Ultimate, or Ultimate Brow Highlighting pencil is what I use on my waterline to really open up my eyes and make them look really bright and awake and pretty. So the other thing that I got that was new um, is the Total Temptation Mascara by Maybelline. And I'm going to use it because I want to use it because it's new, but I've already used it once on my natural lashes and it's a really nice mascara. I really like the wand. Now whenever I do falsies, I just put it on my natural lashes. I don't put it I don't pull it through the rest of them because they're already perfect in black, right? So I think I'll go ahead and, and do that and then I'll take care of my bottom lash line. I just kind of bump it at the base and pull up a little bit. Yeah, that took all the powderiness off the lashes and, and meshed them in really nicely. Yeah, I like. Hey, maybe I will... I'm having trouble seeing those. Yeah, those look good. Maybe I'll try this on my lower lash line. See how it works. You guys, I'm sorry. I cannot. I'm not going to like it. Down here. I'm going to grab my other one. Um, I cannot keep my head up when I'm doing this part. I'm so sorry. Otherwise, I end up getting it all over my skin. So forgive me while I bend my head way down. And this is the Rimmel Lash Accelerator. Yeah, this is my favorite. This is a new tube. I had not had it for a while. I was using MAC extended play giga black and I love that too but I wanted to go back to my drugstore option because I don't need to spend 24 when I can spend 8 alright there we have it I am super happy with the lashes. Oh my goodness, I just looked down way too soon. It wasn't dry, and so now I have little black marks under my eye. But anyway, super happy with the eyeshadow, the way it performed, the pigmentation, the blendability. blendability. It's beautiful, you guys. So now I'm like, wow, next time a really expensive palette comes out that I don't have the money for, maybe I'll go for a bad habit one first see if it'll work out for me in, until or in place of the other one. I think it's super pretty. These lashes though, it's got me looking all doe-eyed. Like a little Bambi. <laughs> 
And if you guys don't know this tip, if you get eye, if you get mascara anywhere on your face, if you let it dry, it'll flake right off with a Q-tip. All right. I was looking through some stuff, and like I said, I didn't really pull out a bunch of lippies for my stash. I just kind of have been using whatever. But I found this. I think that it's, I know it's ColourPop. All the writing is worn off. And it's called Echo Park. And I think, I hope it's not a matte because I don't love the ColourPop mattes. But I think it's a satin. And it's a really peach, pretty peachy nude, and I think it'll go real pretty with the eye look. And so I am going to find my peachy nude lip liner, my buxom one if I can find it. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm gonna go with my matte boldly bare and we'll see how that works out. Step on the This is going to match well. I think it's going to match perfectly, actually. We'll go in with the color pop Echo Park. Uh huh. Step on the land. I've got your hand. And now we're way down. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks really good with this. What do you think? Okay. I'm going to, once again, spray with my NYX Dewy Finish Spray just to finish it all off. Hmm. Something janky is happening with my eyeliner. You know how I feel about that, you guys. I'm just glad I noticed. I wonder if I did it with the squeezing or if when it really dries it draws down your skin. I could be either one actually but I'm gonna go fix it real quick like. And this is matte by the way. I think. <laughs> it might be satin. If by the time we get finished My lips are drawn up like a pruny um, raisin, then it's the matte. I think the other one's fine. Yeah, we're good. But do you guys see how the eyelashes are really pretty and dramatic, but they're not so long that it's covering up everything. You can actually still see my eyeshadow. I like that. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Um, yeah, it was fun to chat and get ready and try some new stuff. This is like a, you know, multi multifaceted video. It's a first impressions. It's a makeup discovery. It's an update. It's a tutorial, it's a, you know, a lot of other things that I'm not going to sit here and list. But I hope you enjoyed yourself. I am so thankful that you're here watching. I appreciate you so much. Um, I know how precious everybody's time is, and so I appreciate you spending some of yours here with me. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you would click on that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care and God bless. Bye, guys. do with it though where did I put it though where did it go though hmm one minute <sighs> um Brain fought.
If you were church, I'd get on my knees, confess my love, I've nowhere to be, my sanctuary, you're holy to me, if you were church, I'd get on my knees, I'd get on my knees, I'd get on my knees. I'd get on my knees, yeah, I'd get on my knees. Uh, forgot what I was saying. Forgot what I was saying. All right. <laughs> so I don't look like a bald, hairless person. <laughs> Step on your